Hi there. Well, here goes the third journal for today. Or actually, no, we'll, we'll call this the first because I have one that I want to read you. And I just did a live one as well. And I'm going to insert a little bit here at the beginning of this one, which is called The Central Importance of Soul Grays in the Hybrid Program. Okay, as uh, many of you know who have been following my journals, I have been working my way through uh, some real emotional intensity that was a total surprise to me the way it cropped up, all these feelings that um, I, I never experienced before. Um, I mean, nobody likes to hear about humans being taken and being frightened and, and having things done to them that hurt. Uh, but it didn't give me any great big deep feelings. Um, I don't tend to be an empath. It just comes on me that way sometimes. But this, I haven't known what it is. I've even questioned my sanity. <laughs> I think a lot of us have probably been there in this waking up we're doing. We don't find any support for it within society. Our history has been ripped and stripped of much that is helpful or would be helpful. And there are those brave researchers who are going back and finding in the, in the ancient monasteries um, old things that managed not to get burned or tucked away, hidden, secreted in the Vatican Library or someplace like that. And so uh, some truth is coming out, at least something that's real, you know, in place of the lies that uh, we've been born, bred, and raised on. And so it's a kind of lonely venture. I mean, we're all doing this together in a way. We, we begin to realize that ultimately there's no such thing as a person, that we're consciousness, and consciousness doesn't have boundaries. A person has boundaries, so, you know, ipso facto, I guess. But a person... It, it still feels that way. And so we deal with that. Just like atoms and molecules seem to be solid substance, even though we know they're not. We know they're practically not there. And yet we deal with the seeming. And we do the dance of experience, learning, and growth within that. And mostly it's okay. And so there's this awakening that's going on where so many of us are doing it, and yet we haven't yet stepped into the fullness of our union, the sensing, the experiencing of that. We're still dealing with the seeming of being the individual. Okay, well enough. And so I guess, you know, we do a lot of our awakening from that state and out of that state. We're awakening out of that. Great. I'm all for it. It's not very easy. We're no wusses, my friends. I don't think anybody incarnate on this planet right now is a pansy or a wuss or a, or a coward or anything else, or they wouldn't be here and in a body. In some ways, it's hellish. It's really difficult. It's dense. It's painful. I go up and down with the pain meds. I try so hard. There's three different scripts that I have for pain meds, and I try very hard to just take them one at a time during the day. Forgot again. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't like it on days when the pain is so bad that I have to take, you know, two different ones at the same time. And pardon my whining, you know. I don't mean to play the victim. I try to watch out for that. But anyway, all right, so what am I here to share? Well, 
I woke up this morning with some additional understanding around this whole thing about the grace. And it, I, it's not anything conclusive, okay? I'm just going to share with you my understandings. But meanwhile, I had this all written out. Let me see when I wrote it. I wrote it at 2.15 and it's now going on 6. So, you know, it's been some hours. I didn't know when I'd record it, but I just happened through the string of circumstance, you know, and serendipity, I just happened to open a book that I've got that I like very much. This is perhaps my favorite book. No More Secrets, No More Lies. Isn't that an awesome graphic, that ge geometry there? I think it's phenomenal. Not just the two triangles, but four. I think it, it uh, represents the 12-stranded DNA and how it's in threes. Three is a very sacred number. Okay, so I just happened to open it up. And what I'm going to do, I think, first I will read you my journal, and then there are about uh, six paragraphs here that I want to share with you. And, uh, you know, just sharing my path, friends. Okay, so here we go. What is your being? Who are you? Do you know? How do you answer the question, who am I? Last night it came to me, perhaps my main objection to the whole grays and the abduction routine. Not just the callousness, the insensitive treatment of the people taken into the ships, though that's bad enough. Having worked through most of my anger around that, and it's been deep, something much deeper comes to light, and it is this. Do you think that you are just a body? Now, surely most of us are well aware that it's not so. Though we may not yet be able to define what we are, we know it is not only that, not just the form. So often the mental knowing comes before the deeper experiential one. Well, it may be that this abduction and hybrid program is after only that, the body, the form. Assuming it's the case that the original grays, the zeta reticulans, are no longer able to procreate, what then? I suppose it's natural to fight against the end of your race, but Let's look at that a bit deeper, shall we? What shall we find? <clears throat> Heck, I don't know. This only came to me in sleep last night, and I'm just now remembering. So, first of all, and I know everything that follows is conjecture and hearsay and opinion, okay? Since we have no proof of anything yet. Uh, but there are various strains of the grays. Some are taller, some shorter, and some are, frankly, androids. The hybrid program is huge. It needed many workers. They could not reproduce normally, so they did what they could. We might have done the same in their shoes. So that's important to remember, to get away from the us-against-them whole duality thing. Okay, so to start with, if you were abducted, it may have been by one of these androids or automatons. One cannot teach feeling and sensitivity to a machine, so it's logical that they would seem heartless in their treatment of you. We can make some allowances. Machines do not have souls. Which takes us back to where I was going with this. What are the souls? One can clone bodies or hybridize bodies in a lab all day long. One can even incubate them in a woman. One can produce them in the millions. There's nothing to stop it. But what of the soul or the being? 
inside. Is one there? I'd have to say no for the Android versions, of course. I'd say no for the clones, too. You see, many people get rather mixed up and upset over hearing stories that ETs have created man. I'd like to point out that we're just talking bodies here, and that is most definitely not what you are. It's like a suit of clothing you put on or take off. It's not you. Now, I know it's more than that, but all the same, it's not you. Stay in heart. Thus, whether ETs have been involved in the combination of various strains of DNA and or later tampering with that DNA says nothing, nothing about the creation of man. Do you see? Can you let this sink in a bit if the idea is new to you? I know that there are many videos and channelings where certain ET beings want to claim that they are our parents, our creators, and all of that. Well, this shoots a major hole right in the heart of that, doesn't it? Okay, feelings tend to run high around things steeped in religious overtones, such as creation. Feelings can get in the way of clear sight. Well, of course, they can bring us to clear sight sometimes, too. But anyway, so I find it pleasant, even comforting, that most ET races seem to hold some belief in an ultimate source, prime creator, or God. An original creator, if you will. I hear no one speaking of creating souls or even creating DNA. Instead, what we hear of ET races doing, what we hear ET races doing, is working with various combinations of DNA or genes, genetics, whether in the lab or via intercourse with compatible races, it amounts to the same, changing the DNA. Now, I would say that if some want to call this creating mankind, they are a bit short-sighted. They still identify with the form, thinking they are the body, most likely. Their answer to who am I has not traveled much deeper yet to identification with consciousness or with the being, the soul. So in a way, the whole argument is quite a tempest in a teacup, wouldn't you say? It all started out without first defining the terms creation and mankind. So let's leave that and move on. What I found upon arising this day was that the basic itch issue to which I have deep objection is bodies without souls. And deception. I don't like that at all. We have all heard of soulless beings, haven't we? Well, at least in stories. Don't you wonder sometimes just how far prime creator or source will go in letting her creatures play God? Sure, on the one hand, we are that. We are cells in the body of that one of prime creator, source, all that is, was, or ever will be, God, whatever, the isness, undifferentiated suchness. We are that on some level. And so source acts through us, speaks through us, and we enjoy our union, our fruit, our joint participation in that. I have not seen nor heard where that extends to the creation of beings, of souls, however. Have you? It's a valid question, I think. Now, wait a minute. Now that I think of it, there was someone's work in hypnosis. Michael Newton is the closest one, and he didn't have any kind of beings. He didn't discover any kind of beings creating souls. He found them 
being created out of the womb of creation. But he did seem to find a location for and an experience of that. So you can Google Michael Newton. All right, and so let's say that by false and forced means, the gray civilization is able to come up with a hybrid race. Are they beings? Or are they just bodies? Pretty serious question, isn't it? Doesn't it get down to what life is all about? I don't know about you, but there's no way I would be willing to occupy one of those bodies. I object right down to my toes to the way that they have been fashioned without our consent or even our knowledge. Frankly, it makes me mad as hell, and I bet you can see that. But then, I'm not in the gray civilization. I'm not speaking from that perspective. So, let's look at this whole thing, or try to, from the angle of the gray beings. The actual beings, or souls, I'm assuming they have souls. I'm assuming that the original ones do or did. I don't know. I'm making that assumption. Benefit of the doubt, okay? So, let's look at what was happening to their race. For whatever reason, they began to have far more beings or souls than there were bodies to occupy. So, we could see that there would be many more in spirit than there were in the flesh. Now, I guess I can't really go too far down this road since I don't recall at this point, I don't recall consciously having an embodiment in the body of another race, one that was not an earth human. I have sensings of it, but I haven't had the direct reincarnation deja vu experience of it. Each one of those that I've had, it's always been human. So I say, um, I know that I have had these incarnations, but I'm not currently able to bring them into recall. Might be the case with you as well. One wonders why there was such a terrible do it at any cost race to provide bodies to inhabit. Why not cross species is something that I wonder. Surely that would be better than taking on the karma generated by forcing others against their will and without their conscious knowledge to do what you want them to do, using them like puppets. But of course, I don't know. It's something to consider anyway. Didn't do a very good job of looking at it from their perspective, did I? That anger is still not finished being processed. Here's the way I look at life. When you come to a corner where you're boxed in with nowhere to go, sure, you may fight it for a while. If you've got any spirit at all, for long enough to be sure you've tried every angle, every possibility. But when greeted with something that just is what it is, with no legitimate or honorable way out, you succumb. I mean, my way is to surrender. You look to discover what the gift is in that situation. You don't force your will on life, on others, just to get your stubborn-headed way. This I see as the behavior of mind, absent both emotion and soul, maybe. It makes me suspicious about the true state of the gray race and their hybrids, though I haven't addressed that yet, so we'll stick with the grays here. What if this is some sort of mechanical life, trying to parade as and come to equality with life that has soul? Real be. Now, there are dark things in life. This we all know. Be in heart, please. It helps. It's not so scary when we're in heart. It's really not. So, there are those who say the origin of this gray race is extra-dimensional, not extraterrestrial. 
There are those who say they come from what Robert Monroe called the gray zone, that area between dimensions that he had to move quickly by in his out-of-body journeyings. Some say this zone is full of lost souls or beings, like a sort of nowhere zone or a nothing land. I don't know personally, just bringing all the potential pieces to the table here. About such a zone, one wonders, of course, why is it there? How it came to be? And how any beings came to populate it? And if and how they could go free? On and on and on. I have also heard it said that sometimes during birth, a soul on the way in to the new incarnation will pick up a hitchhiker from there, that this is one of the ways out for the lost or trapped ones. Again, I don't know. Stay in heart and be not afraid nor concerned. All is well, regardless. The foundation of everything is love. You know that there deep within. Go find it. Stay in that space when hearing such info or push pause and center in now. It will help. Okay, so back to the question of the grace and of soul. I suppose all I can really say is that I question whether they do have being or souls that inhabit those bodies. Now, maybe that's not fair of me. I don't know. It's just that we so often get the whole issue confused by equating bodies with beings that it can be a bit tricky sorting things out. Bodies do not equal beings. This we know. There are zombies and various things. I mean, you know, that's a terrible comparison, but these things do exist. If you have a man standing with 1,000 clones beside him made from his DNA, you have 1,001 bodies, but just one soul. Who are these mad scientists to think they can order souls to inhabit the bodies they concoct? Well, I've got that wrong. Scientists mostly don't believe in souls, so that's how and why they're doing this. I don't think so. What is the divine plan for a clone? Can it have one? Again, though I seriously doubt it, I don't know. We are consciousness. That's as near to defining us as I can get just now. We are also the one, all that is. And as that one, we are also the clones. Yet, that does not mean that we would choose to inhabit one of them, does it? Would you ensoul a tree? Or would you leave that to the races of tree beings? Now again, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we've been trees and mountains and rocks and planets and all of it. Wouldn't surprise me. Honestly, it wouldn't. Okay. I guess I've gone about as far as I can here. Well, I'll close with some rather weak assumptions about the hybrid ones. I did mention that earlier. Do they have souls? How can I say? I look inside for the answers for anything. What do I find? I find a clone to be a soulless being and certainly an android or this combo of chips and man. No doubt we have any number of these walking around. No doubt the powers that were have created them to do their dirty work. So what's new there? Don't be afraid. I don't think we should be surprised at this. It's probably behind what funded the genome project. That's my guess. Now, those are not hybrids, androids and clones. 
as I look to the gray hybrid programs, much depends on whether the grays involved have souls to begin with, doesn't it? And I find it possible that they do not. Though, as usual, I don't know. Remember, these are just ideas. Don't believe. We're just exploring. So, let's even assume that the grays do have souls and that there are many more of these beings in spirit waiting to incarnate, waiting for appropriate vessels or bodies to come along. I think this may hold my answer. Do you know why? Because the Greys have already created a whole fleet of clones. If these beings could be ensouled, then those beings would incarnate into them. Case closed. Problem solved. In their desperation, they'd be glad to have those bodies to inhabit, huh? Do you see? As I said, I don't see that the Divine Spirit inhabits the clones. If it did, this whole problem of the dying race would have been so easily solved. Bodies are more than capable of having a seeming sort of life, absent a soul. I don't know if a soul can somehow be earned or not. Who knows? I like to stay open to any possibility, though. I find that Source is much more creative than our minds can conceive. So, it leaves me still unsure with regard to the hybrid races. If we give the full benefit of the doubt and say that the original greys do have souls, then we must look to the lab process and the forced human interaction or participation that resulted in the hybrid race or races. Is that something that divinity would take part in as far as ensouling the resultant bodies? These bodies do have human DNA, yes. And humans do tend to have souls. But, my friend, clones are made of nothing but human DNA and they don't have souls. The mad scientists are crazy indeed if they think they also command the Almighty One in their labs. Their arrogance is excessive. It stinks with a stench unpleasant to the light. Oh, well, I thought more might come through, a fuller understanding. I am glad, though, to have been able to get as far as I did with this, even if it's not complete. Regarding whether the hybrids have souls or not, all I'm left with is an opinion, which tends to say no. It's nothing firm, though, and maybe more of an emotional reaction, perhaps, to what? My own unremembered abduction? Who knows? I don't. So, I don't trust this opinion. I hold it very loosely. I choose to just watch and observe some more. That generally bears fruit. So, what have you thought of this strange new sort of journal, my friends? Do you think, well, she's gone off a rocker for sure this time, or something like that? Heck, I have to tell you that I have recently wondered that very thing myself. I had to be open. I at least took it for one of the possibilities, remembering that anything is possible. Oh, well. It is what it is, and no doubt I will share it. This was not an easy journal to write. Actually, it was the coming to these understandings that was difficult. There is much more that could be said, but this is enough. The comment threads may get pretty interesting with this one, though. Many blessings to you. My suggestion for all of us is to back off and back off more and more from identifying self with the body or with the mind. It leads us down all sorts of useless roads. It's just not based in reality. And as we remember, we are the being, the soul or consciousness. Where that leads is, frankly, blissful and pure delight.
So the choice is obvious. Okay, now as promised from No More Secrets, and this is page 178 in the edition that I've got. I just opened it up at random, and this is what I read. There are, let's see, and this is uh, in a chapter called DNA and the Crystalline Waters of Your Being. And I respect Patricia Corey highly. There are a lot of channelers out there, most of whom don't bring in any information. They don't bring in any fact. Um, she does. Okay. There are, as well, controlled genetic scientists who are funded and directed by the power, and I call them the powers that were, to unknowingly serve the Anunnaki's plan for absolute dominion over the human race. Some assigned the daunting task of catalog cataloging and preserving the DNA of all living earth forms believe they are working for the good of humankind and the protection of other species, unaware that their dedicated life's work only receives government subsidies and financing to assure that the seed of all earth biology is transported to another host planet and to the moon station, the quote-unquote holding zone of the power elite. Others of a far darker persuasion are willing specimen collectors for the Anunnaki and their alien collaborators who are ever intent upon gestating a perfected slave force for other worlds in other space and time frameworks. Some of these government scientists are serving as laboratory assistants to the Zeta Reticulans in that phase of their invasion of human sovereignty that involves collection of human sperm and ova from unwilling and terrified abductees, a program intent upon saving their own devolving race from extinction. Others still focused upon untold economic rewards are at work capitalizing on the incredible stores of wisdom contained within the designs of creation by seeking to create and perfect biomolecular DNA computer units. I will say that again. Biomolecular DNA computer units that are so minuscule that they can fit a trillion at a time into a laboratory test tube. The potential output capacity of a microscopic DNA computer, which is already past the preliminary stages of its biotechnological development, is the performance of well over 60 billion controlled computer operations per second. Thus, the command triggered robotization of your innate intelligence from the molecular level of your human experience is the cutting edge of their overt technology. Okay. One more paragraph. This is interesting about our DNA. This is what uh, the ones she's channeling are the Syrian High Council. They're from Sirius B, I believe, but I'm not sure. You know, I know it's not Sirius C. It's either A or B. One cubic centimeter of your sophisticated DNA in its limited expression, the double helix, can store more data than all that which can be recorded and stored on over 900 billion compact disks of your current data management technology. And let me get you the publication date on this, 2004. As you can well imagine, that is some highly exciting information for technology designers who are intent upon computerizing human beings. 
Okay, I could go on here, but you can get the book and you can read what they have to say. It really made me draw a deep breath. Um, I have to say it clicks for me. I have one of the reasons I have been so against the vaccine program, first of all, is the way they try to force the things on us, uh, the way they try to create the uh, outbreaks so that we can all run and be good little sheeple and get vaccinated. I have just felt that this miniaturization had already happened where uh, the chips are microscopic and they can enter the body via a hypodermic. And so, I don't know, it's all coming together for me. So let me know what you think. At least it's been a, a rather interesting journal, if somewhat long. Good day.